we, we, we. All right. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a quiz to start out with today. You take down your pencils, paper. I'm going to ask you uh, how many questions. I'm going to ask you eight questions. Ooh, that's hard. These are, these are more mind bending questions than they are about the iPhone or iPad. Okay, mm -hmm. question number one Which can see better in total darkness? An owl, a raccoon, or a skunk? An owl. No. You're writing the answers down. <laughs> Thanks for the answer. <laughs> Suppose that 14% of the people in Detroit have unlisted phone numbers. Now, suppose you randomly pick 200 names from the phone book for the city of Detroit. Assuming that the 14% figure holds true, how many of those names you selected will have unlisted numbers? Question number three. What month has 28 days? All of them. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Part of our class is cheating here. <laughs> <laughs> if, if your doctor gave you if your doctor gave you three pills and told you to take one every half hour how long would they last how many times can one be subtracted from 100 A shepherd has 17 fit, sh sheep. All but nine died. How many does he have left? Wait, say that again, please. Sure. A shepherd has... Um, wait a minute. <laughs> A shepherd has 17 sheep. All but nine died. How many does he have left? <laughs> Take, I, think I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to mute you all, you know. I'll be back here. Take two oh. apples from three apples. And what do you have left? No, I didn't hear the question. Take, oh. take two apples from three apples. And how many do you have left? Okay. The answer to question number one is no animal can see in total darkness. Okay. The, the owl isn't number... right. Say again. The owl isn't right. <laughs> no. <laughs> number two is none will be unlisted. <laughs> right? right. There are not, none of the people are listed in the phone book. Bye. Say again. Um, logic. Suppose 14% of the people in Detroit have unlisted phone numbers. And you pick them. some phone numbers out of the phone book, they're not going to be among the numbers you pick. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that well, you got it now. Three. How many of the months have 28 days? All of them. Oh. All of them. Right. Oh. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Num if your doctor gave you three pills and told you to take it one every half hour, how long would they last? Half hour. One hour. Why? You take one right. at the beginning, one at the half hour point, and one at the end of the hour, right? Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> how many times can you subtract one from 100? You can one. track one once, W O N or O N E. <laughs> it's not a hundred anymore. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> a shepherd has 17 sheep. He all but nine died. How many does he have left? Nine. Nine. Hey. We know that <laughs> one. I got one right. <laughs> if you take two apples from three apples, how many do you have left? 
You have two because you took the. Because you took them. <laughs> <laughs> More to come later. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Can you give me my phone? Morning. Morning. All right, never mind. I got it. All right. Do I? Do we have any questions this morning? Yeah, could we do that test again? <laughs> <laughs> of course we could. No, I have some. I have get some them all questions. right. I have some more for the end, so. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure you're waiting with bated breath. <laughs> a photography question: If you've got a uh, two of them, if you've got a movie uh, that you want to take one uh, thing out, one picture out of the video. Uh, will you be covering that, or is there a technique for doing that? Not um, this week. Next week. Next week. Okay. Right. Today we're going to talk about taking the picture. Put the posy on it. Say again. What was the question? I think it was just a remark. Bill. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to switch my screen. And let's hope we don't uh, disappear here. <clears throat> In about an hour, we may have to restart like we did last time. I'm not sure what's happening there. <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm making the, uh, the video panel on the side of the screen disappears. So you get, you know, have a nice clear picture of both the iPhone and the iPad. Yeah. yeah. And I, I can't see any of you now. So speak up if you have a question or something. Okay. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to, I have a, uh, my iPad set up to take a picture and my iPhone set up to take a picture. But I'm going to go back to the home screen on both. And I wanna to go to settings and talk about things we should probably set up in our camera and in our photos. <clears throat> Before we start there, okay? So if I go to um, the iPhone and I go to settings and camera and I do the same on the iPad, and I'll cover the ones on the iPhone first. Okay. Now, not everybody's going to have all of these settings because as the Apple um, models have come out year after year, they keep adding features to the phones. Okay. When the phones first came out, they had one back camera and one front camera. Mm -hmm. Eventually, if you look at the back of your phones, you may see two cameras. Okay. Yes. If you lack, look at the back of the iPhone uh, 12, there are th three cameras. 11 Pro too. 11 Pro as well. Okay, there's three cameras. So they went from one to two to three cameras. And for example, on the 12, they have a wide angle camera and I'll show you, I'll demonstrate what they look like when we get to the cameras, but, and also they keep improving the, the quality of the picture they're taking. In other words, they're adding more pixels to it. And then they add a bunch of other features as well. Okay. And I'll just run down through some of these in my iPhone, it's the same on the iPad. Uh, they have one called format. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you have, if you're only going to use the, the, well, it's not, if you use high efficiency, it takes less space. Each picture takes less space on your phone, but it's an Apple, you, um, it's an Apple format. And mm -hmm. the format gets changed when you want to download it to your PC, for example. If you keep it within the Mac world, high efficiency is probably a good way to go because it takes less space. If, you, if you're mix and matching, 
Apple and PC. Then you may want to change it to uh, most compatible. Okay. Anybody out there have an idea of how much space a picture takes on your device? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what our that's what our kids and grandkids would say <laughs> if it's a uh, and i'm, I'm going to explain this if it's a 12 mega megapixel megabyte picture 12 megapixels it takes 12 million bytes in raw form to save a picture wow. oh. right 12 wow. million Okay, that's 12 paperback books for one picture. God. Right? Now, if mm. you convert it to each or either, it gets converted automatically to high efficiency or most compatible here. And that <coughs> reduces it to one to two million bytes. So it's significantly less than raw. Mm. You'll notice on the iPhone there, it says Apple Pro Raw on mine at least. Oh. I don't have that on the 11 Pro. Right, you may not have that. All right. I don't have any of this stuff on mine. You don't? High efficient. How did you get to high efficiency? Either. I tapped, I tapped, I was in camera in yeah. settings and is it say formats at the top of your camera? No. Okay, so you don't have the capability of adjusting that. I don't, okay. So as the cameras have evolved, they've added these kind of things. No, I don't want to do that. Because I forgot my password. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that to my, my students. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> um, Is there any reason why you'd want to have the Apple Pro Raw on? If you are a professional photographer. And you're taking those wedding pictures with this thing. Okay. And you're going to go in and you're going to start editing the picture, cleaning up, do whatever they do, the professionals do with a picture. Okay. All right. I'm going to go back to this camera. And record a uh, video at twelve. Okay, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it to. And the the higher the count there, the more space they take. But the more the better the video is. Okay. If I do this on the iPhone, it's a lot more options there, and I just choose the 1080p HD. And again, if you want. The professionals are going to go up to 4K, perhaps. Again, takes a lot more space. And they tell you what the space is that those take in that little description on my iPhone there. Okay. Ah, slow motion. I'm not going to use very many slow motions. Do it that way, or you can go to the more memory consuming motion uh, option. Oh, I can 720 at wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, on the newer phones, there's a, there's a feature that they actually record the sound in stereo and directionally, which is amazing to me. If you're recording a video and so you hear, uh, you're taking a picture of a race, let's say a, a, a motor race, and the cars are coming down the track, it'll pick it up on the, let's say it's coming from left to right, it'll pick it up the sound on the left speaker and as the, as the race car uh, comes in front of you, it's on both speakers and then it exits on the right. And it's recording that stereo sound. And when you play it back, it will be that way. Okay, an important one that we have 
we need to go to on the iPad and iPhone is pre preserve settings. <clears throat> Preserve the last mode, such as video, rather than automatically resetting your, your photo. Many people have that on. And if you have it on and you're taking a video of something and then you choose your turn off your phone, you go about your thing, and then you come back and you want to take a picture, it's, it's in video mode. And so you think you're taking a picture and you start taking a video. So I recommend you do not have that on and you, you have it off so that it always goes back to photo. And if you're taking a video, you, you're making that decision. That makes sense to everybody, I hope? Yeah. The next one there on the, uh, <laughs> well, the rest of them there I have turned off with the exception of uh, portrait zoom, And that, uh, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference. What it does is when you're taking a portrait, it, it, rem it remembers what the zoom setting was when you did that. So if you zoomed in on the portrait, it would be that the next time you take the portrait. Usually when you're taking a portrait, you're gonna mess with the zoom anyway. So I guess you can turn that one off. The last one there though, in both the iPhone and the iPad is live photo. All right. This, this logic is kind of conf, um, <laughs> confounding. I need to describe to you what a live photo is. And we'll, we'll talk more about it in a minute. But a live photo is a video vignette. It's a three second video. And you get it oftentimes when you're taking a picture because it can shift into live video mode if you touch the wrong place. <clears throat> and then every picture you take is a three second video. <coughs> <coughs> So what I recommend here is, so you're not doing that because I've, I've helped people with their photos and I've seen that they have 300 live photos because they didn't know they were in live photo mode. And the, for some reason, Apple has decided to, whenever you bring up the phone, if you don't have this feature on at the bottom, Whenever you bring up photo, it switches on live photo. So Bill, you're saying I should turn it off. No, you should turn it on. That's oh. why this is convoluted, oh. right? Preserve the live photo setting rather than automatically reset to live photo. Okay, so you don't want to preserve the live photo setting. You want to preserve what you had it set at, right? <laughs> it's, it's very confounding that, so yeah. why wouldn't we turn it off? No, no. <clears throat> There's two conditions you can have your phone in, live photo and not live photo, all right? If this is off, it will go to live photo the next time you go to your camera. So it will go to live photo automatically unless you turn this feature on. <laughs> For some reason I think they want you to take live photos. It doesn't make sense, but so I turn it on. And then when we get to your, the camera, I'll show you how you turn it off and it will stay off all the time. When you, if you go to somewhere else and then come back to your camera, it will stay off. <clears throat> if you have this feature off, when you go back to your camera, it will turn on live photo. 
Now, if that isn't confusing enough, <laughs> where do you see the rest of the class? <laughs> where do you see question number nine? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, and I'll, we'll address that a little more when we get to uh, <laughs> when we get to actually taking some pictures. All right, now I'm going to go back to camera. <clears throat> I have a question. Why did you not have portrait zoom on? You can have that on. Uh, that one doesn't make as much difference because you're looking at what you're taking a picture of. And if it goes back to the zoom you had, fine. If it doesn't, you're probably gonna zoom it or change it anyway. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> There's a thing called live text there. <clears throat> and what that does, if you're looking at a sign in French, it will convert the sign real time in the camera to English. For example. Wow. That's a new feature. I guess you have to have a, you have to have the new processor for that, I guess. Um, it, it's, it's. I don't have live text. You don't? No. Well, this is an iPhone 12, so. The it's an 11. It's on the 11? It's on the 11 Pro. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's my phone. I don't see many in French, but I see a lot in Spanish. And there you go. All right. Scan QR codes. Turn that on. Use volume up button for burst mode. Mm -hmm. I have that on. I'll talk about it as well. Uh, turn on grid, if everybody would do that. And if you don't like it, when we get to it, you can turn it off. <laughs> well. Mirror front camera. Um, let me see what that does. I think it reverses, and I'm not sure which way you, you should set it. I think it does it like the. Uh... So this is the front camera, and my right side, I'm winching my right hand, right? Yeah. Now, if I go and I tap mirror it, okay, and I go back to camera, still right side. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, so I, Bill. That's not your right side. That's your left side. Oh, is that what it looks like to you? Yeah. yeah. You're waving your left hand. Wave, yeah. I'm waving my right hand. No. 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 It's no. Left. Is Sarasota right or wrong? It's backwards or wrong? wrong. Backwards. Backwards. No, it, this is my left hand. See, my wedding ring's on it. <laughs> well, that's your right hand for us. Yeah. That right. And now, wait a minute. Let me flip it. This mirror. That's interesting. Camera, and I'm going to turn off mirror, and then we'll go back to camera. And now, which way? Your right hand. That's no, the right. Left. No, that's the left. Same left. thing. Wait a minute. Your Sarasota is still backwards. Backwards. Uh -huh. All right. It's stuck. That's your <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when I take the picture, it comes through the other way. Not sure. <laughs> okay. It's supposed to, it flips the background because I did that with the, my photo that I used for Zoom. I've got that palm tree. Right. And I know that's what it works on Zoom, but her image because I was it looked like the palm tree was growing out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you know, the ocean is to my back. Yeah.
Photo capture automatically improved photos of various scenes using intelligent image recognition. And I'm not sure what that one is, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and then you have a bunch of others. The last one there called Smart HDR. Does anybody not have that to speak up, please? I don't have it. I, I don't. don't. Have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. I'm going to turn it on on one of my devices and not have it on on the other, and I'll show you what that difference is. And we'll talk about it when I get there. Okay. Uh, if you don't have it, you have you'll have the ability to adjust this feature, whatever it is, HDR, when we get there. Okay. Should we turn it oh, on? I have a brand new phone, and I don't have that. Brand new what? iPhone 13 Pro Max. Oh, that's correct. Uh, they made it automatic. You can't ch change it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or there's another feature. We'll see what it is when we get there. So, Bill, should we turn that on? Uh, I changed my mind on this one. Um, initially, I said no. And I've changed my mind and I'll explain why when I get there. So yeah, turn it on for your smoke, for your phones. Okay. Because you'll be getting better pictures. Okay. I think we got them all. Oh, everybody uh, go back one level and go to photos. <clears throat> And make sure you have iCloud photos turned on. <clears throat> There's a feature there. It's called optimize iPhone storage or download and keep originals. You have a choice between those two. If you're running out of space on your iPhone or iPad <clears throat> and you have a lot of pictures, you can do this thing called optimize iPad or iPhone storage. What that does is it, it each picture is taking uh, between one and two million bytes. And what it does is it takes that picture, it sends it to the cloud, it makes sure it's in the cloud. And then it makes it a picture, it reduces the pixel uh, by about 80 to 90%. So the picture only takes 100 megabytes instead of one to two gigabytes. I'm sorry. <laughs> one to two, no, yeah. Instead of one and two million bytes, it takes 100,000 bytes or 200,000 bytes. There's one decimal off there. What that means is you have a thumbnail size picture on your device. And when you go look at the picture, it's granulated. And if, but if you're hooked to the internet, your iPhone or iPad will automatically go to the cloud, get the full version of the picture, bring it down and show it to you within a second or two. So it looks a little fuzzy and then all of a sudden it clears up and that's what's happening, okay? The advantage is it saves a lot of space on your device. <clears throat> Bill, I have a question. Go ahead. Bill. Uh, Cheryl has an iPhone, I have an iPhone. And if it uh, automatically uploads pictures as we take them, does iCloud keep them separate or are they merged into one big album, you might say? <clears throat> the pictures that are in the, first of all, they're all in a, a, an album or folder called Recents. Okay. If you have established albums on your iPhone or iPad, those albums will also be uh, available to you to see in the iCloud. So in both devices, all the pictures are grouped together in, in an album called Recents. Mm -hmm. When you create another album, it does, 
it doesn't remove the picture from recents. The only thing that new album has is a pointer to where the picture is in recents. I don't know if that made sense to everybody, but there's the album doesn't have a duplicate of the picture. It just has a pointer to where the picture is in, in the main album. Okay. And we can talk more about that next week when we talk about photos. And let's just say, turn these things on for the next time. Shared albums, hidden albums turned on. Uh, on your iPhones, if you have cellular data turned on, do you want to, you, you need to make that decision. Do you want to transfer the photos to the iCloud while you're on cellular data and therefore it might be costing you money if you're exceeding your plan? And many people choose to turn that off and the pictures are only sent to the iCloud <clears throat> when you're on Wi-Fi. <clears throat> okay, let's go to uh, let's go to your phone your camera now. <laughs> How come that one picture looks so much better than the other? Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, on the iPhone, I'll focus on that for a little while. I'm on, I'm in photo mode. And I can do, know that because it's, it's yellow and it's in the center. If I wanted to go to one of the other modes, for example, <clears throat> I would tap here where it says, can you see my little dot on the screen? Yes. I would tap where it says video and it would move over or slow motion. So that's the way you can change the mode you're in. Okay, you can also see that the button actually changes its appearance. Slow-mo, the button will be a little different. Time-lapse, I think it changes even in time-lapse. <coughs> <coughs> Notice the border of the, 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 um, the uh, shutter button changes. Well, the portrait is the same and pano looks to be the same. But you get the idea? It's the same on the iPad. Okay. This is the shutter button. There are many ways to get this thing to take a picture. You can hit the shutter button and that takes a picture. You can hit the volume down button on your device and I'll do that <clears throat> and it takes a picture. If you have your earbuds, the, the wired ones. And there's a volume control on the earbud wire. If you hit the volume down button, it will take a picture. If you hit the volume up button, it will take, we set it to take a burst mode picture. Now I'm going to do that and watch the screen start flashing. How many pictures did I take there? I took 12 pictures. Okay. All right. It's called, I call it paparazzi mode. 
<laughs> whenever you're watching uh, some star getting pictures taken of them, the flash is going off the big, and you hear the and they're taking, they're just holding down the shutter button, right? And letting the camera take whatever number of pictures it wants. And then they go ahead and pick the best one. <clears throat> Sharon, you have earbuds, right? Sharon? Yes, I do. Yes, Are you I do. able to tap the earbuds in any way to take a picture? I don't have them now, but if you give me a sec, I'll go get them. Okay, but uh, are you able to adjust the volume with your your um, earbuds, or do you have to go? To I your... don't believe so. Okay. I, I can adjust the volume with my earbuds. You can. So it's Bluetooth earbuds, and I can adjust the volume. But they're, are they Apple ones or other? No. No, there are third-party ones. Okay, I'm not sure, but if you hit volume down, whatever way you can, it may have the shutter go on the... I, I think it does. Yeah, I use hearing aids now, so I haven't used them in a couple of years, but I think it does. I think I was able to take pictures with them. Okay. If you have Siri set up right, you can say, hey, Siri, take a picture. <laughs> and it would. That I didn't know. You can, if you have an Apple Watch, you can have, you can touch, you can take a picture with the Apple Watch. And there's, there's not enough of us to justify spending some time on that. But you can do a search on Google and say, how do I take a picture with my Apple Watch? And now it's not taking a picture with the watch, it's, it's causing the shutter to go on the iPhone camera. So, question? Yes. Siri, uh, with any uh, phone model to take a picture? I think so. <laughs> I'll have to try it. That's great. Eliminate camera. Take a picture. And I think it did. Wait a minute. When I do this, I'll get Siri. Take a picture. Yep. Took a picture. Great. I think it did. <clears throat> Not sure. There is a way to do that. <clears throat> okay. And again, we can you can do a search on Google and says, "Hey Siri, how do I how, how do I take a picture with Siri?" <clears throat> All right. Your, your, I want to show you one of the coolest things on both the iPhone and the iPad right now. And that's the ability to adjust the focal depth and the shutter timing with the touch of your finger. Now, you'll notice I'm focused on the bird right there. If I tap the upper right-hand corner, well, let me do it with the uh, pointer. If I come up here and I click or tap the screen, a box appears. Did you see the box there? Yes, see the box? Yes. 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 What you're telling your camera to do is focus there, not on the beak. If I wanna focus on the beak, I'll go over here to the beak and I'll click, and now it's focused on the beak. And you actually saw it change the focus there, didn't you? I'll mm. go back up over the wing and you'll see a little difference that happens on the, see that? And the beak got, got fuzzy. Now I'll go back down to the beak and the wing will get fuzzy and the beak will get clear. Okay? So you're telling the camera to focus there. Once you tell the camera to focus there, you can also click and drag and change the brightness. See the brightness changing? Mm. And that's determining how long the shutter will be open. Ooh, that's a nice picture, isn't it? 
<laughs> and I'm going to take that one. And that's the picture. Mm. So the idea, and it, most, a, a lot of us have, have had 35 millimeter cameras and we got lenses on them and you crank the lens around to, to uh, change the picture focus, what you're focused on. And then there, many of us got into adjusting the shutter timing to allow more or less light to come in while you're taking the picture. All right. So you have both of those features, which are wonderful on the iPhone. And, and by the way, on the iPad, I'll do the same thing on the iPad and then adjust the lighting. Okay. Everybody try that? Adjust the lighting. Yeah, why don't you just try it? Bring up your camera. I'm going to, I'm going to focus on, on my iPad on the flower there. And I want it to focus on that. Okay. So that should be more in focus than the rest of the picture. It wasn't as obvious as it was on the iPad. Okay, there's this feature to zoom. Okay. I have three cameras and you'll notice that on my iPhone there, it says 0.5, one or two. Now I'm gonna go to the point, I'll go to the 0.5. Okay, see what happened? Wide angle, the one, and now I'll go, Zoom in. All right. Now you're going to say, but Bill, I have the capability of just putting my fingers on the screen and separating them and it will zoom. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to zoom out by pinching my fingers closer together or zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in on the beak here. Wait a minute. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, I'm on the wing here, right? And if I do the same thing on the iPad, okay. And you're gonna say, well, Bill, I, ha I don't have all those extra cameras and I can do what you're doing by just zooming in. Let me explain that. All right, um, there's an optical zoom and a digital zoom, okay? An optical zoom, an optical zoom is a different lens. When you had your 35 millimeter camera, you could put a different lens on it and the glass would magnify what you're looking at. <clears throat> and you'd be able to take the picture and it would be great quality. That's what the three cameras do on my iPhone. I have three different lenses. If I do the digital lens by putting my finger on the, the screen and zooming in, okay, that's called an optical zoom. Yeah, that's called yeah. a digital zoom. Digital zoom. Yeah. And yeah. all I'm doing is taking the number of pixels and reducing the number of pixels that is being, that I'm taking the picture of. Okay. And the picture will be fuzzy. You can do a optical or a digital zoom with the picture itself. There's the picture. Okay, I'm looking at my camera now and I can zoom in. Okay, and after a while it gets fuzzy. So you don't need to do the zoom of picture, the zoom, digital <laughs> zoom when you're taking the picture because you can always go back to your picture and actually do a digital zoom to it. 
I hope I made that clear. Any questions about optical and digital zoom? Oh, either I made it so complicated. <laughs> On your, I have, a, I have a question. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, when you have the you have the the fractional, which is the wide angle. The one is the neutral and the two that you've got on your camera is your zoom. When you're selecting, if you use your finger to try to zoom in on a picture, does it automatically change from one lens to the other? Or does it, uh, or do you have to be sure you're in wide angle mode or uh, uh, telephoto mode in order to get the, op the optical to work? <laughs> I don't know, Bill. <laughs> But I understand what you're saying. He's saying I'm in I'm in one uh, X right now, and if I take my finger and spread it out, I think it switches to the two camera. Does it? If I go yeah, I found on mine it, it it automatically shifted. Yeah, I see it's doing that. It automatically switches to the two camera for the rest of the zoom. See how the numbers changing on the two camera, and if I zoom in past there, it switched over to the one X camera and now it's shifted over to the wide angle. Okay. So yeah, it does switch lenses automatically. Wow. <laughs> All right. So now we have the capability to zoom in. We have the capability of uh, determining what we want to focus on in the picture. On my eye, phone there, I have a lightning bolt. I do not have it on my iPad. Some of the new iPad Pros do have a camera, uh, I'm sorry, a flash. And that's what the lightning bolt is. Okay. And right now my lightning bolt is on auto. If I switch it, okay, now it's off. And so the question might be on mine, how do I know it's going to flash? Well, I'm gonna cover the camera. <clears throat> can't cover it all the way. <laughs> you see if the if i'm in a dark situation the lightning bolt turns yellow i just put my hand over the lenses <laughs> all right now you may have one a, an, an iPhone that if you touch the lightning bolt, it has the capability of saying auto on or off. Where you can control, you can have it do flash in the middle of the day. If you turn it on, if you turn it off. So you, in order to do that, you tap the little lightning bolt and you would get those features. It would say on, off, or auto. Some of you out there have that? Yes. Okay. I have that. All right. Uh, I, I've got a, a second circle next to the uh, uh, lightning bolt. And when I cover the lens, instead of having it shift to lightning, it goes to two second delay on the. Uh, right. The, or, the, 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 there, you've got it there. So it goes one second, two second, three seconds. But if I completely cover it, okay. What it's saying is I don't need to use the flash. I'm just going to extend the shutter time automatically. All right. The next one there. On the iPhone and the iPad, and the important one is, you see the one that looks like a bullseye, a little target? It's not necessarily in the right-hand corner. It may be in the center of your screen 
on the iPad, it's the top of my, my uh, iPad. That's the live photo and it's off. And you need to check that from time to time to make sure it is off. If I tap it, it turns on and looks like that. It actually came through and temporarily said, live photo on. Now, when I take a picture, it will have recorded, will have past tense recorded the last second and a half of whatever the camera was looking at and will require and will record the next second and a half. Oh my gosh. Okay. So by having live, uh, I had a, yesterday I was teaching a class and the lady had a picture of her grandchildren jumping in their pool and she, and she clicked the lens, she had it on live photo and they had, they jumped and she was trying to get them in midair, not realizing that she had live photo on. So she's sitting there with her camera pointing at her. She says, jump, and she takes the picture. And then she goes and looks at the picture and she has a picture of them standing there, jumping up in the air and hitting the pool, all three seconds of that particular thing that happened. And was, she said, wow, <laughs> it was much better than she thought. And there is a way to capture just the one of all of them in midair and have that as a picture. And we can talk about that next time. Okay. Wait, so you want it off now then, right? I would have it off most of the time. And you just touch it to turn it off. So it has the line through it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, now some of you may have on your screens a little circle which says HDR, high dynamic range is what that stands for. And on my iPad there, you can see it. It's this guy right up here. <laughs> okay. Let me explain what it does. It's taking basically three pictures at three different uh, focal lengths when you tap it. And the example I want to give is um, you're, it's the springtime and you're out walking around in Vermont and the leaves of this maple tree are, are all spread and they're green and they're really, really bright. And the sky is just blue as it can be. And you want to capture that moment. If you take a normal picture at normal focal length, for example, I'm taking a picture of the tree and the tree will be as brilliant as ever. But the sky will be kind of a off blue, it won't be the brightness you remember. If you have it in HDR mode, it'll go click, click, click. And it will get something closer to you than the tree. It will get the tree and then it will get the background. And it will take the best features of all three and combine them. And so you'll have the blue sky you remember, the green tree, and if you had anything in the foreground, it will have that as well. Okay, so HDR is a wonderful feature to have, and it's automatic on my iPhone right now, so it will happen. When it does happen, it takes a little more time. I'm going to take a picture of the on my iPad and watch the button and everything. I'm taking the I'll, I'll move my mouse over it and then I click the button took a picture, right? Now I'm gonna turn off HDR and I'm gonna click the button and it'll just be a slightly longer time. Wasn't it the other way around? It was already off. It was off, I just turned it, I'm sorry, I turned it on. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. There's a line through it. Now I'm turning it on. <laughs> 
Very little difference, but it is a difference. <laughs> okay. Any questions on HDR? Bill, I have one. Yeah. Uh, the, um, the, the HDR photo takes up a lot more space than a regular one. Correct. So well, if you have a space issue on your phone, you might want to exactly. optimize or do something else to say. If you have the space issue on your phone, you would turn off automatic HDR on your phone. Okay. All right. Then just use it when you really want it. Right. And that's what I have done on mine. Okay. If you don't have the little, oh, I, that, I'm sorry. I'm in auto now. Let me go back. camera I'm going to turn off auto HDR or smart HDR as they call it and now you see I have the little indicator the same as on my iPad it says HDR up there and I can control it right thanks okay okay Bill yes sir on mine, when I'm in photo mode, in the upper left-hand corner next to where the flash is, I've got an exposure there, plus two right now, it says. So I don't see, and, and if you click on the exposure, come down to the bottom, you can change, you know, just slide it back and forth <laughs> from, zero to two. So how is it that go, how can you put it back to automatic? Exposure? Yes. I'm just yeah, mine's different from yours. I know. Um, Why do I have flash disabled? <laughs> If you if you put your hand over the um, lens, you'll get that exposure thing for some strange reason. Yeah, so you're talking about that, Jim. This well, mine ha mine happens without my hand being on it. It mine's there all the time. It seems it's the uh, indicators there for you to touch it, or is it yellow? Wait a minute, I, I'm not following what you're saying. On my screen right mm -hmm. now, I've got it in photo mode. And at the very bottom of the screen, it's got exposure. And there's a- Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Uh, you can increase it or decrease it. Right, you see the little arrow at the top of the screen? Yes. Go ahead and tap that little arrow. Okay, I've done that. And now exposure at the bottom should have disappeared. It did, but it's at the top too. It's right up next to the flash. Right. I don't see it on yours though. <laughs> on, on, aren't, you, aren't you mentioning this little indicator right here, this exposure thing? Right, My I had a light on my the little bird you're I'm taking a picture of there and it overheated my camera, <laughs> my phone. So it's saying, I don't want to flash right now. <laughs> but where are you saying the little ex exposure? That's, this is the exposure indicator on my phone. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. What are you saying I don't have? Okay, on mine, in the upper left-hand corner where you've got that exclamation point, I have the flash right there. Right, I would too, but my phone's overheated. Because oh. okay, I have a light. Right next to the flash is a little scale for the exposure. That's right. Right now it says plus zero three. Well, well, click on it. Okay, I clicked on it. Well, then it puts at the bottom of the screen then the plus three and I can slide okay. it. Increase. Now move. Now you see the little. Uh, you can change the number. 
Yes. And go ahead and put it right in the middle so it says auto. Mine doesn't say auto. It goes down to minus two. Then I can increase it up to plus two, but it doesn't say auto anywhere. Doesn't say what what phone do you have? iPhone 12 Pro Max. Okay, this is a pro, and you should be able to say, put it right in the middle, and it would be auto. All right, let me see. Well, mine doesn't change to auto. Hmm. It just says uh, plus one exposure. That looks like it's about the middle. Yeah. But it doesn't say auto. It just says. It says plus, plus one. one. Yeah, uh, plus move one. It the, move it to the, you know, go the other way and see if you can get it to say zero. Bill? Yep, go ahead. Mine says auto right in the center, but it's off. And it's on when it's like yours is now. Okay. Right. And then when you move it, it's, it's, uh, it turns to yellow, the off. Right. Look, sounds like Jim's is far more accurate than ours. <laughs> oh, I just can't get it to right. go to auto. Unless it was in settings somewhere, it allowed it to go to auto. Yeah, there should be an auto setting there somewhere, Jim. Okay, but I don't find it. Okay. All right, so we have covered flash. We have covered the shutter, which we just talked about. We've covered HDR. We've covered the um, <laughs> oh, live video, right? For those of us with the newer phones, you can hit the little arrow here in the center at the top. And it brings, whoop, let me hit it again. And it brings up a whole lot of settings here at the bottom. Some of you may have had, may have some of those settings on the top of your screen. For example, you see the little clock for those of us who have the arrow. If we select one of these features, let me select the um, shutter speed. So I selected that and it comes up. Now I'm going to deselect the shutter speed by tapping that little round thing again, and I'll get the full menu of things that are included here. Okay. There's shutter speed, live video, or live photo. A four three picture, a square picture, a nine by six, 16 by nine picture is one of the things I could do. This is plus or minus exposure. The one that all of us have is this thing, this thing that looks like a clock there. Anybody not find the little? Where's the clock? Well, it's right yeah. for, for me, it's right here at the bottom. For many of you, it may be at the top of the screen. Anybody not find it? <laughs> and you're afraid. It's called a shutter delay. Okay. All right. And it's a timer for how long you want the shutter to take before, how long you want after you press the shutter button for it to actually occur. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it to 10 seconds. Okay, now I'm looking at my bird. And if I hit the shutter, the screen will start counting down and the flash will go one, two, except the flash won't go on mine right now, <laughs> okay? It'll start counting down. Now you won't. Now you have time to run around, get in the picture, smile, and the people that are you're taking the picture of would be counting the number of times the flash goes off. Okay. 
and we got to 10, it would take the picture. <coughs> if, if any of us had got serious about 35 millimeter photography, we would put a filter at the end of our lenses to change the color. So we could add a, diff a, a, a different effect. Many of you may have these little concentric circles at the top of your screen. They show up here on mine. And if I tap them, it comes up with a <clears throat> filter or a set of filters. There's no filter and I can go and I can start putting different kinds of filters on the picture. You can see me, they slightly change. Warm. Oh, black and white. Silver tone. Noir. Now, one of the things that's great about our iPhones and iPads is we can do this after we take the picture. You can actually do the same thing. And we'll talk a little about that next week about when we get into editing. So you can take this picture and take it from, I took a color picture, but then I wanna make it a black and white. Okay. Be sure you swing back and have it on original. So it's taking a picture without any filters. And the way you can tell it's a picture with filters is if those rings are not black and white, okay? See the rings are black and white right now. If I change it up here to some other, go clear over here. Now those circles are colors indicating that you're you're not taking a black and white picture. Again, the reverse of logic. That's not the kind of picture you're taking. You have to tap it and change it. Okay. Any questions? None. No, I have a question. Oh, good. We have a couple. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> okay, this is my question. Everything that you've been uh, teaching us, which are is excellent, um, <laughs> does that also work for video when the camera is in video mode? Let's get to video and we'll talk about that. Okay, great. Thanks. Hey, hey Bill. Yep. yep. Go ahead. While uh, fooling around with mine, all of a sudden I get this thing that says. Flash is disabled. The iPhone needs to cool down before you can use the flash. Okay. That's what mine's doing too. <laughs> and I've got now the same symbol that you have up in the left-hand corner. The flash is disabled, I guess. So, and yep. then next to it is that other symbol. Yep. And that's the one that has auto or night on it. Yep. You can move it down to off. Yep. And move it to auto. Yep. So I still just don't quite oh, get what's so you happening. You hit the exposure thing there at the bottom. Yes. Ah. <laughs> Ooh. Why does yours turn to auto? I'm just moving it around. The, the plus minus at the bottom there? Yeah. I have it set at zero. Oh, zero. Mine. Yep. Mine is zip four and three on it. Yeah. Four. Exposure or? Well, mine turns, Bill, mine turns to auto. Say again? You knew it a while ago, but now it says auto. Like when I do what you're doing, yeah. mine eventually goes to auto. 
It does? It does. And yours is not doing that. Well, let me go to the other thing. Here's auto. And then I go off. Okay. Oh. Amazing. Keep discovering all this stuff. I I also I found that when I go ahead. Uh, I had a uh, when I was playing around with. I had the situation that Jim had with the uh, uh, the exposure time and the flash both there, and I found that when I moved the thing around and I ended up uh, getting over into the telephoto mode the uh, time exposure just shut itself off at that point. So by Good. zooming in and out, I was actually able to, I was finding that that would either work or not work. Okay. Let's shift gears now and go to video. Okay. Now on the, the phones that have the little arrow at the top, tap the little arrow. And now I can shift to video mode. So let's go to video. How do you get to video? video. Okay. I'll do it on my iPad. <laughs> all right. And I don't have all those nice controls that uh, someone asked about. So I don't have the capability to, to play a lot with depth of field and color and all those things. The thing you know notice when you're in video mode, if you touch the button, it looks different. It turns into a square. And it's recording both sound and picture. And it's a square, meaning it's still recording it. Now, I guess I can zoom in as I'm watching it. And I'll bet that changes on the video. Another thing that shows up on the iPhones is a white button there. The white button says, hey, this looks like an interesting picture. If I just click the button, I will get, it will take a picture of that in the middle of the video and record the picture. Okay. So I took four or five pictures of what I was videotaping. And they're supposed to appear in your photos. So I'm going to do this and take a picture just to see if I do get a picture. Okay. And then to stop the video, you tap it and you'll notice at the top, it's recording the time. Okay. Bill, yep. may I say something else? Yep. My iPhone has gotten very, very hot. It's, it's too hot for me to really keep my fingers on it in the back. Uh, mine has two. Oh, okay. Mine's exactly the same as yours, Jim. Okay, okay. Well, uh, and I, I'm stressing mine a little more than yours because it's, it's, uh, it's, sending everything it's got to my computer so I can display it to everybody. All right, slow motion, right? Many of you have seen a, a one I recorded for my grandson. And what it's doing is taking a picture and then playing it back at a slower motion than the, than the actual action. It's great if you have a tripod 
I'm sorry. It plays it back fast. Um, it plays it back slower than what you took it. And I think I have a slow motion video I can show you. Many of you have seen this one before. It's a five second video of my son racing his car. My grandson. Okay, get the effect. Okay. So it'd be great for the finish line of a race where you can just take, sit there at the finish line, wait till the horses get somewhat close or the race cars or whatever. And you start your video and you just hold it there at the finish line and then play it back. The camera has the capability of time-lapse. Time-lapse, you probably should have a tripod or something uh, suitable to rest your device on and then start taking the time-lapse photography. Great for capturing a sunset. Um, opening, uh, if you have something relatively fast, like a, a flower that opens quickly. Um, all right. A couple others here. One that I really like is called Portrait. It'll be interesting. I'm going to try a portrait on my bird friend here. Okay. And I want to try it. Ah, I didn't turn it off time. <laughs> not going to do what I hoped it would do. Um, one of the classes, I, I took a picture, a portrait picture. What it's doing when you click on portrait, let me do something here before I go on and turn off the delay. Okay. If you're taking a picture of someone, it will blacken, you know, you have the different features you can have. For example, there's natural light and you can go here, clear over to studio stage lighting. And if the conditions are right, it will eliminate all the background noise and you will just have a great picture of that person's face, for example, in portrait mode. I've done this in a few. Let's see if I have any pictures of that. Yep. I think I have. Did I get rid of Jim? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Here's a person I took in one of my classes. And he had a lot of clutter in back of him, and it eliminated all the clutter in back of him. My wife, and the one I really like is my grandson, okay? Bill, Go which, ahead. which setting illuminates the background? Natural natural light or which light? So swing over to where it says day, stage lighting. Oh, stage light. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And there's stage light mono. There's stage light. There's highlight mono, and stage light. And what you need to do is play with it to see what you need to play with it to see what kind of thing it yields for you. Okay. 
what's the difference between stage light and stage light mono? Color and black and white. The stage light would be the picture as you see it. And if I go to mono, you'll notice the pictures in black and white. When you're playing with these um, settings, what you see on your screen is exactly what the photo is going to look like, correct? Most cases, that's correct. Sometimes this, this one, this one, oh, look at that. That may be better. Let me try it. Boop. Ah, see what happened? That was stage light in color. It blackened it. Oh. It, it blackens the background. Let me try it again. Uh, it's not blackening it. <laughs> you want it to blacken the background. <laughs> yeah, I can't reproduce it again. If the lighting is just right, it, boy, it, it eliminates all of the background and you end up with an image that's really cool. Okay. No, can you take a silhouette? Say that again. Can you take a picture of a, of a person in sil like a silhouette? Am I saying it right? I'm not sure. Where do you Where do you just have a black uh, outline? Uh, well, it was the whole yeah, just the silhouette of their, their yeah. I haven't found a way to do that, but I bet there is. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yep. My stage light is not blocking out the the background. It doesn't. I've I've found it doesn't always do that. It depends on the picture, the amount of light, et cetera. In my, in my classes, I have one of Jim. I had one of Jim that was really cool. <laughs> okay. And so if, if, if you have a lot of clutter in the background and you try it, sometimes it really works well and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> and, I, and I don't, I haven't experienced enough with it to determine what the controls are that are make it happen. The best advice to everybody is try it. See what happens. Bill, yep. I have a question. This is a little bit uh, a crazy question, but uh, <laughs> my question is this. When you're taking a video, is there a way to turn off the sound? And my question is because I'm going to be taking a video uh, from a... A project an eight millimeter projector that's running on a uh, on a projector, and I don't want to have the sound of that eight millimeter projector going in the background. Can I somehow mute a video? I'm going to go see if I can find out for you. All oh, right. let me ask Bill. Hey, Bill. Could you still, could you Google that for us? And the, the question is, can I, are you there, Bill? Oh, I may have lost Bill. Ooh. My space bar stopped working as far as uh, unmuting. I'll check on it. Okay, thank you. And the question is, is there a way to not record the sound on a video? You know, but it's kind of a cool effect though, isn't it? 
<laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see when we get the answer. <laughs> All right. One more thing I got to cover, and that's Pano. And whenever you have a, a picture you want to take in Pano, and that you've got a vista you want to, or the oceanfront, or whatever city view. You can hold your camera vertically or horizontally. You see the little arrow right here on the camera. And when you hit the button, you start going this direction and don't go up or down. You know, don't tilt your camera up and down. It will tell you not to do that. It will also tell you if you're going too fast as you go across. Two things. One, you can stop it at any time so you don't get an entire 180. Or you can continue to go until the arrow hits the end and it will automatically stop. So you can say, oh, I only want to take a panel of this little, of this portion. So you start like mine is right now and you go a little, you may be halfway across and you can say that's enough and you just hit the button to stop it. You start it by hitting the button. You start moving the camera a little bit at a time, and then you stop it or to, to stop it prematurely, or you can go clear to the end. Okay? Have I any more questions on taking pictures with your iPhone or iPad. When I first got my iPad, I didn't have an iPhone. I took it to Disney and I took a whole lot of pictures of, at Disney with my iPad. Okay. Any questions? I have an answer to the video audio part. You do? What is it? You have to do it after the video is done. You can go into edit mode and remove the video part of it. The audio you can. part of it. Okay, so that's in something edit we, mode. That's something we have to cover next week. Then. But if you go. Excellent. If I, if I, Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, yes. So it's in edit mode for the photos. It cautions, so it doesn't just mute the audio, it removes it. So if you want to send it to somebody without the audio, you're going to remove it forever. In my case, for what the project that we're working on, I think that's kind of a good thing. I think what we want to do is remove it because the, the crazy idea is somehow then play it back without that projector noise going and then narrate what actually is shown on the... Um, on the screen, you know, on the video. I don't know. It's it's a see and learn type project. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see. Bill? Yep, go ahead. When you're usually taking an ordinary photograph, do you use the four by three or the 16 by nine? Wow. So when I'm in photo mode? Yeah, in photo mode. You have that up, you know, you can make a square, four by three, 16 by nine. Ah. Which one do you usually ordinarily? It looks like four by three is the natural one. Four by three is what you usually do. Four by three is the natural, but if you send it to a place like Walgreens to get a photo made, it gets cropped to a four by six, which 
you lose some things that are important. I just took a picture with um, the 16 by nine and I'm going to experiment on how it reflects to a four by six, which is what we do when we want to print a picture. And okay. I'll let you know that next week. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. I just want to give you a little um, taste here. If you go to uh, your photos, just a little bit about photos, right? So I've gone to my photos. And if you don't have, If you don't have this across the bottom, you need to hit a back arrow at the top because this is really what's known as the home screen for photos where it says library for you, albums and search. And if you go to albums, and then scroll to the top of the albums list. It will say recents. And that's where all your photos are. And they're listed there in chronological order from, and the, the most recent one is at the bottom of the list. On the other hand, you could go to library at the bottom. So let me do it on the iPad as well. Mm -hmm. On the iPad, the different ways to view your photos are on the left side. So you don't have to hit the back arrow on many number of times and recents is there. If you go to library, by the way, recents, if I tap recents, there's the pictures that I just took. All right. If I go to library, across the top, on the iPad, across the bottom on the iPhone, it says years, months, day, and all. If you click on years, it automatically says, what year would you like to look at your photos? Mm -hmm. right from what year and then you could tap the year and it separates that year into months and if you tap one of the months let me pick one where i have a bunch of days it would say the various days you took the pictures get the idea if you tap all, you're going to see them all just like you would in recents. <laughs> By the way, I tap recents here. I don't quite have all my photos here yet. Okay. It's still downloading some, see it? Because my photos from my phone go to the iCloud and then my, my, uh, my iPad goes to the iCloud and gets the photos. So it will continue to update and that eventually catch up with all the photos I have on my, there comes some more. There you go, I'm now caught up. All right. Everybody got your pen and pencil out? Oh, Piece of paper? You ready? All right, first question. What is the capital in Russia? Hi there, I am calling you from AT&T. Oh, come on, I don't need really competition, my questions. <laughs> Back at 
Okay, <laughs> I just muted everyone, right? And let me go back and uh, there we go. All right. So the first question is, what's the capital in Russia? Can a man living in the Soviet Union be buried in the US? Is there a 4th of July in England? How many animals of each species did Moses take aboard the ark? You have a pail and a wheelbarrow. The pail holds the equivalent of one square foot of dirt. The wheelbarrow holds two square feet. How many pails of dirt can be taken from a hole two feet square and two feet deep? If you enter a dark room with only one match and you know that, it, that in that room there's a kerosene lantern, an oil stove, and a cigarette. What do you light first? Okay, everybody ready? Moving. What is the capital of Russia? Go ahead. And what is it? R. Oh, we're getting smart here. <laughs> capital of Russia, capital in Russia is R. Can a man living in the Soviet Union be buried in the U.S.? No, he's still alive. Oh, Sharon. <laughs> All right. Now, you're disqualified now, Sharon. You have to... <laughs> okay. How many animals of each species did Moses take aboard the ark? How many? Marie says none. None. <laughs> Moses. Moses. <laughs> Who was it? Noah. No. <laughs> How about you have a pail and a wheelbarrow? How many pails of dirt can be taken from a hole two feet square and two feet well, deep? A hole, there's nothing in it. <laughs> there's nothing in a hole. <laughs> okay. And if you enter a dark room, what do you light first? The kerosene, the uh, kerosene lamp, an oil stove, or a cigarette? You or you light the match first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So I have a question. Oh, please. Yeah. Now that we've got iOS 15 and their infinite wisdom, they've gone to focus. How do I get back? to the simple do not disturb. You know, we used to have a do not disturb, you pressed on, the, on the, the moon and you had all your choice of selections. You know, an hour, you know, until I leave this location, until this appointment is over. How do I go back to that? I don't need a whole thing, I'm not working. Just turn focus off. Go into settings and turn focus I off. I think you can do that. Uh, let's see if I can. Lady who has a what what uh, Focus. what Diane is talking about is with the new feature, you get notifications. And many of us are getting notifications from various applications. And what they added was, well, you want to you want to group your notifications so that you don't get certain notifications at certain times during the day. And so they added this whole complication again to oh, notifications, okay, which was what we talked about. And so if I go to settings and notifications, where is it? 
here it is. I gotta go settings and notifications. It says scheduled summary notifications. Can you turn on your share screen again, Bill, please? Uh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. And I can't seem to get rid of focus. Okay. So I went to notifications. And the first one is schedule summary, right? Uh, can you do it on your iPhone, please? Oh, absolutely. Notifications. Schedule summary there at 6 p.m. Show me everything. Hold, hold on a second. Let me get into notifications. Okay. Okay, I'm in notifications, yeah. Schedule summary, hit that, I have that off. turn it off. It is off. Okay. So now you shouldn't be getting summary notifications. Show previews. Always, never. But, uh, I'm sorry. How did you get to show previews? Write the next item down. Oh, uh, hold on a second. Schedule summary. Show previews, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have one ways. Okay, screen sharing. Yeah. I have notification. I have allow notifications. I have that turned off. Yeah, that's turned off. And then as uh, I have announced notifications from Siri, I turn that off. And then if we go down below here, each one of my notifications I have to control. So for example, uh, Alfred camera, I get him banners, sounds, and badges. Now, for those of you who are just tuning in here, mm -hmm. notifications are something that the apps are capable of showing you anytime, anywhere. It said capable, many apps, and here's the list of apps. And so that Alfred camera, I have no idea what that even is, but it, it's an app I've added mm -hmm. and it's going to come down and show me a little banner here at the top, uh, sure. little banner. And it's going to make a sound and a badge when Alfred camera decides it wants to do that. So it could be randomly anytime, day or night. But I never had a coach with all of this before though. I know. And you can disallow that one. Or allow. You can lock screen. I allow a notification on the lock screen. Excuse me, Bill. I have a question. Go if ahead. I do this, then aren't I shutting it off all the time? They'll never have notifications. For that's what it looks like to me. You're talking about scheduled summary. That's oh. what they've added. They've added the scheduled summary of notifications. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've, I've chosen not to do that. I have it all off. Yeah. Can you just go to focus and turn off focus altogether? Excuse me, Bill. If I have scheduled summary is off, then why do I have to go to each individual? Bill, let me ask Bill that. Where are you going to focus, Bill? If you, if you look, it's on your... Uh, you have on your iPad, uh, focus was the second one down below notifications. I need it on my iPhone though. On the iPhone, okay. it was in that same block. So let's go down, let's go back to notifications. Focus. Good point, Bill. Yeah. Right go below notifications. Go down to focus down here. So I went back to the settings menu, two items down from notifications is focus uh, okay let me find that yeah it's focus okay okay yeah do not disturb turn that off <laughs> driving off sleep off personal 
Did you have something set up there, Diane, for personal? Or work? No. No, the only thing I ever used was, uh, you know, was flipping up the, you know, going into just setting up a, the do not disturb, like if I was in a meeting or in a location where I didn't want to be disturbed or something. Correct. And this is all new with 15. I never set this up. Well, this is all new. But you shouldn't be getting uh, any. But you see, the problem I'm having is when I go into notifications, you know, when I slide up and going into notifications, it no longer has that little quarter moon thing. It has focus. And okay. then it wants you to set up your focus thing. And all I want to do is just have do not disturb while I'm at a Zoom meeting or something. I never set this up. Okay. So go to the go to settings and focus. You see where it says do not disturb there? Yeah. I think you go ahead and turn that on. You turn that on? And then you have to set up the whole thing. No, just turn that on. What now? That's what I had on. And then, but then yeah, it, you have to go further down and you, you know, you have to, then it's gotten, you know, so then what do you do? You shut off everything else? I don't think you have to, but I, I haven't played with it. Bill, do you, have you played with it at all? I just put it on the screen. No, I haven't, but I, uh, mm. I can see some of these things are acting peculiar to me too. Okay. So I would at least turn on do not disturb there. Yeah, well, turn no, off everything else. Mm -hmm. so now I have do not disturb us on. Correct. But how do I, you know, but that means I'm not going to get any notifications. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says here focus silences, alerts, and notifications. I've got do not disturb us on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't want that. I just want do not disturb when I'm in a meeting. <laughs> That's all I want. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I usually flick the side button on my phone. Yeah, well, I always forget to turn it back on again. Okay. <laughs> That's why I loved it when they had that, where you could just slide up and make everyone by the, by the way, I forget to turn it back on, too. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Okay. Bill. Yeah. Under the focus at the bottom of that screen where it says focus status, you can set the time when you automatically want it off. So in my case, I turn it off at nine o'clock at night until seven o'clock the next morning. So you can turn it off automatically during those times. Yeah, well, they always had something like that. But what well, I well, you can still do that. You know, we're from with some. Yeah. No. Oh, sleep, you're saying. Okay, you're, right. You go to sleep and you say. Yeah, but that's like the do not disturb from before. Yeah. Okay. Okay, my screen is a bit different from yours, though. Is it really? No, I have the same stuff. Okay. I'm going to study it a little bit and we can talk about it another time. You turn where it says do not disturb, turn that one on. Focus status on. Okay. Focus status on here. Right there, turn it on. That's interesting. Another one of these reverse logic Focus things. Status, have, do not disturb, turn, turn, it, on. turn it on. Turn, turn on it on. automatically at 8 p.m. and off at 8 a.m. <laughs> but you got to turn it on to start with. Your ears is off. Okay. 
I have do not disturb turned on. But you don't have the focus on. You got focus status off. You should turn that on. Okay. Okay. Now, status is on. <laughs> yeah, right there it is. Yeah, we got to turn off automatically. You can set the time. Well, you know, the thing is, it's one thing if you, you know, if you don't want anyone disturbing you in the evening, but if you're meeting with someone, you don't know when it's going to be over. Well, wait a minute. I understand. I understand. You can set that any time you want, though. Yeah, but you don't know. You don't know how long a meeting may be. There's, there's, what she's saying is she wants one button to turn on and well, off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's just this location. Yeah, we got. We have to play with that. All right, we can talk about that next time. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> now I had a way to shut this off. How do I get this off? <laughs> <laughs> you may learn about it sooner than you think. That's right. <laughs> I wish I had the time. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Uh, now, you have one thing. now you have me curious, Diane. <laughs> yeah. if, if you touch, if you sit down your control oh. center and touch the focus button. Yeah. You will come up with uh, some things. One of them says, do not disturb. Now, instead of just the plain do not disturb, if you hold it, you get it. one of the choices until I leave the meeting. Really? Really? Oh, where's that one? How do you do that? Which one's the do not disturb? It's the moon, right? <laughs> right. Well, if, if you bring down your control center by holding you up at the upper. Oops. Did I lose you, Bill? Hello? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just a minute. I brought the notifications down. So if you put your finger in the upper right column and I'm in the control center. I know. Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me make sure I have do not disturb in there. It, it's hidden in the new rev. It isn't a choice to add anymore. Okay. So, there, oh, there it is. And so that do not disturb on, that normally says focus when you first in an iOS 15. Right. So then when you say focus, then you click the do not disturb, but you see the three dots. So if you hold the do not disturb, it says you want to do not disturb for one hour until the evening or until I leave this location. Cool. And that's what and that's what I used to use for the leave the location. So that when I forgot, okay. I would I would it would all automatically take care of it when I left. So let me review that just to make sure we all got it. Thank you so much. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that if was we, the best tip you ever. Did. <laughs> if we go to the control center. Thank you. A do not disturb indicator there. We tap it. And then we tap the three little dots in the upper right hand corner of do not disturb right here. Then we say for one hour for this evening until I leave this location. Great. Yeah. That's cool, right? That's so cool. much for finding that. <laughs> oh God! That that was the best thing that I uh, that I ever learned. <laughs> it, it made such an enormous difference in my life, and I've been so frustrated. So <laughs> hey, Bill, you get the star for today. <laughs> but, yeah. <thank> you. <laughs> holy moly! Huh? Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, I forgot your name. It's Bill. His Bill. name is Bill too. His name is Bill. Also. Thank you, yeah, sir. I'm Bill Keller. <laughs> you made my whole life now. <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> uh, 
All right, everybody. Nice having you again today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Bill. Really good. Thank you, Bill, and for the handouts also that you sent out last week. Okay. Right. Thank you. It's from Florida. Uh, for, thank sorry, you, Bill. Texas. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Next day. Next day. Take next care, day. everyone. Bye-bye. Yes, nice to have you. Again. Be well. Have a, have a great week. You too.